The police in Hanover are questioning a man who turned up at a police station ahead of a warrant for his arrest after a house went up in flames. Two persons with whom he had spent many years are now homeless and a ch young child is caught in the middle of what appears now to have been a heated separation. It's like it's a dream. It's like I'm in a dream and I just can't wake up. Ingrid Campbell, up to 10.30 a.m. on February 28, had somewhere to call home in Industry Cove, Green Island, Hanover, a place she shared with her eight-year-old daughter and her father. was in the shop working. Somebody said to me that smoke coming from the house. And by the time I ran down there, all I could do was just throw out the cylinder. By the time I turned around, just pure smoke, pure black smoke. Now, they have nothing. I had a hair this in salon. And my dad goes to the shop, that's where we're standing on. The house, three bedroom with living quarters, veranda, kitchen, bedroom. And my dad had a work shed at the back. And we, just, we lost everything. Everything is gone right now. While she is consoling her child, her father is behind bars after turning himself in on Tuesday. We had a small argument in the morning and by the time he left, there was smoke coming from the house. She says it's difficult to understand such action, considering they had come to what sounds like a mutual agreement after spending some 11 years together. I asked him to leave a while back. He, asked, he said I should give him some time to fix up his place. So that is what was going on right now. He was just staying here, getting his place ready so that he could move. It's hard. Really hard. Meanwhile, in this Newswatch update, the mother of Shaniki Ribbon Brown, who was fatally stabbed by another girl on Sunday night, is refuting the police's uh, report that she was not at home when the girls attended a party nearby. She told CVM News that her family lives nearby and she was home with her son when the incident occurred. Now her 18-year-old daughter, who was also stabbed in the incident and was treated at hospital and released that night, explained what happened after the party. All of us was in up top in the shop yard. I told my sister that I'm ready, that, that's about 10.30. Them time, they like say, 10, 20, you know? Same time, my son already come out of school tomorrow. And mommy will cost me because mommy was at home. She was at home. Young Brown says uh, most persons had already left though. Moments. Shaniki Brown, a student at. I, I hold my sister hand, she flashed me off and walked down and exiting out of the yard. Same time, Kaya, which is her son, came out of the shop. She was at the shop, on the shop veranda. She came out of the shop. And all of a sudden, I saw my sister fluttering. She attacked my sister at the same time. Me and other co members of the community rushed down there. I was fighting Tessa. But I didn't realize that my sister got stabbed and was to drop. And people are partly not even me. They recognize me. It, she stabbed me. I got two stitches. And the picture there is of the deceased, Shanike Ribbon Brown. Now, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he's not trying to, quote, mash up dance hall. In fact, he intends to make dance hall one of the pillars of Jamaica's tourism product, as Joel Crossgill reports. Dance hall is a national asset for Jamaica. An endorsement for dance hall from an unlikely source, as Prime Minister Andrew Holness embraced the culture as an important part of Jamaica's tourism product, despite recent complaints about the message and image it broadcasts to the world. Music is art. Music is culture. Art and culture is not just the reflection of the current state of reality. Art and culture is this art and culture is to elevate 
the people. Nonetheless, the dark reflection of dancehall culture the PM speaks of still proves attractive to visitors to the island. International travel advisories notwithstanding. And when them come and see it, you know what the bad thing is? They take it and go back and package it and use it in their own pop culture and make a ton of money off of it while we stay here quarreling over dancer. And nobody can tell me that I can make any statement about this national product which is of great value to Jamaica. Part of that value sees a growing trend of travelers up to experience an authentic Jamaican visit in the actual homes of locals through services like Airbnb. They listen to the music and they want to relate to it. They want to see it for themselves. It is part of what they will go back and tell their friends. Speaking at a graduation ceremony for budding chefs who completed the TPD Coast culinary training program for the Olympic Way community, Prime Minister Andrew Holness placed this order in prominence on the menu of Jamaica's recognized tourism product. Is that I am going to back the entertainment economy. So we are going to review the entertainment laws to ensure that we provide and designate places where you can keep your entertainment, providing you observe the law. Joel Crosskill, CVM News. Stay with us. News Watch continues after this break. Maybe you should. Dreams and deceptions. I'm gonna blow people's minds. He's a rock star. It's just a dream. I don't know what it feels like to tell the truth. Once you tune in, there's no turning back. How cool is that? Hollywood Heights, Fridays at 5 p.m. on your entertainment choice, CVM TV. All eyes on CVM television as we present the Ready TV Thanksgiving service under the theme advancing technology with God as our coach held last Sunday at Portmore Gospel Assembly be ready to join tonight at 9:30 for this special airing exclusively on CVM TV Thank you for staying with us. On this Ash Wednesday, one former volatile community is seeking to once and for all give up a cycle of violence which led to a murder last month. A march for peace on March 1 in a community called Top Range Mountain View that experienced its first murder for 2017 last month. We're afraid for leave for coming to our next community. So we just wonder and a wish and a hope if this the Gansey, the march, the peace, if the people can just sit down and relax and enjoy and just make a focus on peace and not war, please. One killing is too many for a community that recalls a tumultuous past but has grown accustomed to peace in recent years. I am standing with members of the community today in their support for peace. Uh, historically, Top Range has been a very peaceful community. But well, recently there have been some instances, some situations that have disturbed that peace. And in fact, um, it has resulted in the murder of one of the members of this community. Uh, needless to say, it has shocked the community. And um, this afternoon, people have come out in a show of force to say to the world, to say to Jamaica that they stand for peace in top range. 
president of the Top Range Community Organization, Lee Croft Small, was also part of the march. Persons have been coming to me and persons have been expressing their fear and, and their, their concern to be in the community because of what is happening. And today we're here to really say to the community, come out, be normal, because the community have not lost um, out in total. We have had the incident, but it's not beyond us to get back to where we are. We, we were. Joel Croskill, CVM News. Insights into the operations of Indicom were provided on Live at 7 Tuesday as Jamaica witnessed a spike in police shootings for the period January to February over the same period last year. Joel Crosskill tracked that story. Take this as a, as a, a red light or an amber light flashing red. You cannot return to this level of shooting. The watchdog agency with powers of prosecution, Indicom, has noted a disturbing trend as it relates to a 55% uptick in fatal police shootings since the start of 2017. To be fair, there's been considerable improvement in, in the JCF's uh, use of force policy in the number of deaths, and the, the three years between 2011, 12, 13, uh -huh. were over 600 fatal shootings, and the last three years, the last 36 months, we're down to 300 plus. And that downward trend has stayed even towards the end of last year. Nonetheless, Assistant Commissioner Campbell insists that Indicom is having a positive impact in other aspects of policing. We don't want to be seen as always being negative to JCF because that's just not the position. You know, they have addressed the issue partially of planned operations. So we looked in the last two years at where planned operations had resulted in a fatality we asked for the commanders to provide their written plans. And it didn't start off well because there were no written plans for over 100 such operations. But in the last year, 2016, there has been an improvement. With eight successful prosecutions in six years, Indicom senior legal officer Courtney Foster detailed some of the stumbling blocks her office has faced in pursuit of a higher conviction rate. Mm. The reality is that we do not have adequate courtrooms. We do not have enough prosecutors. We do not have um, enough facilities just to facilitate trials being conducted. Uh -huh. Sometimes when a matter is on the list for trial in the circuit court, unfortunately, you do not have enough jurors attending in order for the trial to commence. So it's a number of factors. Joel Croskill, CVM News. Her students of the Angels Primer School in St. Catherine recently showed off much of their creative ideas during Career Day 2017. Equal to their ideas were their presentations supporting a common theme. It's always comforting at a point of arrival or departure to make contact with a friendly pilot and to see the business and education sectors creating their own signals. But what if every nurse and doctor waved at you and gave you the peace sign? And the cops, even those with coughs, flashed a smile as your caring protector. Well, if these young dreamers wake up with the concepts they have in mind, then the vision of expanding our horizon for 2030 may see more hands-on approach to tying up the deadly loose ends in crime fighting across the island of Jamaica. We find that children, they have invented houses that you can touch and they, and they talk, planes that will um, get underwater and fly underwater, cars that talk and telephone that just hold a thief wherever you are, you just touch a button, your finger has been scanned and the thief is held. These young students of the Angel Primary are proving to be not just good critical thinkers, but they are articulating their thoughts. How, for example, to help plant lovers identify every plant using a plant findomatic. Acting Vice Principal Brenda McGaw is encouraged that the children understand the importance of the topic and that they got the desired support on career day. The children see their parents coming in, they see adults coming in, and so they can emulate these persons, they can see what they want to be in the future. My name is Brenna McFarlane and I am the inventor of the Brenna's Plant Grow. As you can see that this is a blueprint of it, and uh, this is my creation. Everyone can, ex everyone can excel, because all of us, we are special and we have the gift to excel. Add more news watch after yet another break. <laughs>